guys, today I'm bringing Jurassic World Evolutions. Um, I know you can play it on a couple of different consoles, PS4, Xbox, PC. I played it on the PS4. Um, I think just about the biggest difference is on PC. You can cheat, you can get mods and unlimited money and all that stuff. Um, which kind of made me sad at first, but then once I started playing the PS4 version, I realized that if you get a four star rating on the first island, which is pretty easy to do, like four or five hours maybe just for all of it, then you unlock Isla Nubar, which is the island from the actual movie, and when you go there it's basically a huge sandbox, and you have unlimited money, you can make whatever you want, so in the end you, you can pretty much do it anyways. Um, which makes sense, because with the PS4 and the Xbox they had their trophy system, and it's just annoying to cheat for those anyways, so you can still have the sandbox and unlimited money and then still have the challenges so it's it's cool the way they did that even though I've seen a couple people complain about that um, but if you guys didn't know this game is basically a simulator dinosaur theme park simulator and at first my first thought of it was I, I don't really like simulators I don't like micromanaging unless if I do have unlimited money which is why I said at first it kind of made me sad, but once I realized how easy the game is, but also how difficult you can make it if you wanted to, it, it almost does have a play at your own difficulty, so it, it is cool. If you just want to get the trophies and unlock everything, there are many tips that you can do. Um, if you beat the first island, which is incredibly easy, um, you can max out all the different buildings. I don't want to give too much away about the buildings and the research and whatnot, but there's tons of things you can research to get better buildings, better dinosaurs. If you do that on your first island, when you jump to the second island, it'll give you a challenge. And if the challenge is too hard, you can either play it like it is and say, I want a tougher difficulty, or you can go back to the first island and transport some of the things that you're researching to the second island. So when you jump to the second island, you just sell it all and get a buttload of cash so it's in essence infinite money anyways once you get your first island set up um, so for those of you who are saying that simulators are normally too hard I would say give this a try um, because the first island is easy and once you beat the first island you can use all that money for all your other islands and make all the challenges pretty much non-existent um, the game like I said at, fir at first I'm not that into simulators, so I thought this was going to be a game that I would just play for a couple minutes and walk away from, um, but I've almost been playing it every single day, uh, almost hours and hours. It, it, it really is a fun game, and it just it does make you want to come back for more. Uh, at first, it seems so simplistic that you're just like, oh, there, there's no way I can play this for more than a day, um, but the simplicity is almost in that. Um, with, with the simplicity, though, this is one of the best games to play if you also have a TV. If you're like me and you have the game on one TV and then you have another monitor with whatever you're watching, this is the perfect game. Because there are points where you would set up a mission and you'd have to wait two minutes to, to get it finished. So while you're waiting those two minutes, you just watch the movie or the show or whatever you're you're doing. It's, it, it's a fun, casual... Like I said, you can make it as difficult as you want. So you, you can make it where you have to pay attention nonstop or you can make it just a casual thing that goes in the background while you're grinding and watching TV and talking on your phone or whatever. Um, the mechanics are really easy to get into. Um, I know with some simulator games they have like 79,000 buildings and 79,000 mechanics and they just throw it at you and you're like, what? Um, but with this they do slowly introduce buildings. They, they might say, hey this is the electricity building and that's all you have and you, you gotta provide electricity to these buildings and then once you uh, provide electricity to the buildings they say oh now these buildings work we're gonna tell you what they do and you're gonna be able to make them now a and then once you make those they say oh with these you can build this dinosaur and now since you can build this dinosaur you can throw them in the world and then once you throw them in the world and, and so on it just keeps slowly adding the mechanics so you really get an idea of how to play and it, it doesn't feel like it's an annoying way where it's holding you back because even with the low level buildings it, you're still having a blast and you can always go back to islands later and upgrade them and change them however you want and 
um, if you replay an island, the one thing that's fun is, um, like, I don't want to give away too much, but let's say the first island you unlock 20% of the buildings, the second island you unlock 20% of the buildings, the third island you unlock 20% of the buildings. So once you get to the third island, if you go back to the first island, you have access to those 60% of the buildings that you've unlocked. So even though you've already beaten the first island, you can still replay it and have fun, and you can say, oh, well, that was really stupid that I put that building next to that building because now when the dinosaurs attack, this is going to happen. So you'll know, you'll learn from your mistakes, and you can... It's almost like its own little challenge in itself is just upgrading your own islands. So it's a really fun way they did that. Um, another huge thing with simulator games that I'm always horrified is the infamous bankrupt. You've gone bankrupt. Um, so that was kind of scaring me from playing this game at first. Um, in this game, you can go bankrupt, but like I said, the first island is really easy. So the first island is really, really hard to go bankrupt. And on the second island, it's not too hard, but on the third island, that's really where you can go bankrupt and you actually do start off bankrupt because they want to teach you what to do when you're bankrupt. Um, so when you're bankrupt, like I said, you just do the island hopping. You can either sell everything on the island to remake it and then slowly build up, or you can go back to your first island, send things over, sell it, and so you can play it however diff difficulty you want. So that's really fun. Bankrupt isn't a thing in this. I was afraid to make save states, thinking that my save states would be dead, and I'd have to go back days instead of just minutes, uh, but... Yeah, I, I've never had to worry about that yet with the bankrupt and being able to go back and forth to islands. And it's easy to pause, it's easy to just walk away. So that's always a fun thing in, in this case. And one of the fun things is how realistic it is. I, I know that sounds silly because it is a dinosaur and you're building dino DNA, but if this really were to come into the world, they really do have the layout and they do have the the tranquilizer team and moving team and they have evacuation sites and shelters so I, I'm just sitting there the whole time I'm like if this really were a theme park that is how it would run and you can actually see the people running the the details are fun you can get in a you can get in the Jeep and actually drive around and see people panicking and or or you can be the one holding the gun trying to trank the the dinosaur or you could just let it manually do its thing it, like I said the difficulty is yours if you want to do it manually and you want to micromanage you can but if you just want the game to take care of itself it does so it, it's a real real fun blend of of all of that difficulty and the other thing is the crisis crises crises when they occur they normally never happen more than one thing at once so like a dinosaur might break out, but I've never really had two dinosaurs breaks, break out at the same time. I haven't unlocked the last island, so it might do that now. And I haven't really done challenges yet because I've just been doing the island. So the challenges might specifically put you in situations like that. Um, but so far, it seems to, to be really manageable um, for if you're just a casual player, which I really love. This, this game is for everybody, the casual players and the hardcore players. Um, the, the cons with the game, though, um, really short <laughs> missions. That could be a good thing. Like I said, it's easier to watch TV when you're doing that. But the bad thing is there are only two minutes. I think the longest one I've seen is five minutes. So you're, you're sitting there, and when it's 12 o'clock at night, you're just like, oh, just one more. It's only going to take two minutes. And then if you didn't get what you wanted, you're like, oh, just, just one more. It's only two minutes. And then at 3 o'clock in the morning, you're like, are you serious? <laughs> I've been playing for that long. Um, so that's a pro and a con. It's a great con to have in a game. Um, the, other, the other con is the reputa reputation. You do need three different reputations in the game. And they make it seem like you have to micromanage one, because if you do one, the other ones go down, and you got to decide whether you want one or if you can equally blend them. So at first I was like, yeah, this is going to be really fun, because that's what I like. I like doing the reputations and micromanaging those to make sure they all go up at once. Uh, but then when I realized how extremely easy it was to make them go up, and then you can buy contracts to make single ones go up, it's like, well, why not just get contracts and just make them all go up and not worry about it? Um, but I'm sure there are certain challenges where you can't do that, and there might be mechanics. 
I think they they said there's like a sabotage mechanic, so that might make it harder for me once I get to that. I think I'm only like one island away from the last one. So that's a con, but like I said, I haven't gotten too far in the game, so it might be irrelevant once I get to the last island. And the last but not least with the cons, sometimes when you place a building, it doesn't take an effect that you need a pathway. Every time you place a building, you need a pathway or else that building doesn't work. And there is an out-of-bounds area, so if you place a building next to the out-of-bounds area, it might not let you build that road because you're out of bounds and it doesn't know enough to not let you build there which, which is fine to me because if you build it it's your fault you can fix it but the other con is that you can't move so once you do place it you can't even tilt it so like if you build the path this way into the border you can't just do a 180 turn to make the path go that way you have to actually sell the building and rebuild it and um, same thing with the monorails once you unlock those if you build the monorail I, I had it where I couldn't build the track because it was out of bounds and you have to do the monorail in such a specific angle so even though it wasn't out of bounds and it looked like I could go straight I, it, it tr kept trying to curve into the out of border so I had to relocate everything um, so if they if they just added an ability to move buildings or even just to rotate buildings. Even if you couldn't move and you just rotate, that would be cool. Um, but for that being really the only con, I would say it's a great game. Um, it was on sale. I, I was always tempted to get it because it was $60, but $60 seems too much for me because I'm not in simulators. So it was on sale for 17 bucks, and that definitely piqued my interest to say, well, even if I'm not into it, that's... I can get a review out of it <laughs> and then I really ended up loving the game so if, if you love simulators you'll definitely love this and if you don't like simulators but you like the idea you'll probably love this especially at the at the deal if you can get it at $17 like it's on sale now I think it's $17 or 19 for the deluxe edition uh, I would highly advise buy it play it and just have fun with it if anything you could just beat the first island and then just have fun in sandbox mode um, but that's it for my review on this game, and if you guys liked the video, please hit the like and subscribe, and thank you, and see you next time.